Hey there, welcome to this video. My name is Jan Sardan. I'm the founder of LearnSolidWorks.com. And today in this video lesson, I'm going to show you how to model this beautiful sport glasses in SolidWorks. So we're going to start modeling the rim of the glass in SolidWorks. Then we're going to draw the lens, uh, the nose pad and the bridge right here. Then we move on to the end piece right here. And then we're going to model the temple and the temple tips right here. So it will be a lot of fun today and you can download the SolidWorks working files and renderings of this model in the link under this video. Let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the background color of our working screen and click on plain white. We're going to start by making a new sketch on the top plane. We're going to the midpoint line and we will draw a line for construction. So I'll click on the for construction and we'll start the line on the origin. We make it horizontal and we click escape to close the line command. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw another center line. And this time we will start the center line on at the origin and we'll make it vertical, just like that. Now we're going to draw another center line, starting from the left end point of the first line up till here. All right, guys. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that those two points are horizontal. So they are on the same height. Now we're going to add the smart dimension. And we change the angle between the lines into 7.5 degrees. Just like that. We drag it a little bit downwards. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a dimension from the horizontal line of 140 millimeters. The vertical line will be, let's say, 125 millimeters. Just like that. All right. Now we're going to draw a three point arc. So click on the three point arc command and start the line on the lower end point up till the lower end point on the right. Just like that. Now we're going to draw a second three point arc from this point up till this point. Click OK. All right, now we're going to apply a dimension. So we select the smart dimensions and we apply a curve of, let's say, 150 millimeters. We drag the dimensions a little bit to make it more organized. Now we're going to apply a second dimension on this arc as well. And let's give it a value of 240 millimeters. Now we're going to mirror our curve. So click the two entities to mirror, make sure that copy is enabled and click at the mirror about and click on the vertical line right here and click OK. All right. We're going to surfaces, we're going to make an extruded surface. So we rotate the screen a little bit and we make sure that, that the surface extrude is 10 millimeters long. Click OK. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a fillet. And this will be a fillet of 3.5 millimeters. And we're going to make sure that the profile I'm sorry, you're going to make sure it's 35 millimeters and we're going to make sure that the profile as curvature continues. We select those two edges right here and the curvature continuous uh, radius makes it a little bit more smoother than a traditional radius. So click OK. All right. So now we're going to make another sketch on the right plane. So select the right plane and click on the 2D sketch icon. We click on normal tool to rotate the screen. 
Now we're going to draw another three point arc starting at this lower end point right here, up till here, just like that. We make sure that the end point is merged with this edge, so click on make pierce. Now we're going to add the dimension. So click on this line and this line, this point and this point, and change the height into, let's say, 50 millimeters. Just like that. And the radius will be 55 millimeters. All right. Now we're going to apply a dimension to this point as well. So select this point, select the second point, and this, this will be a length of 12 millimeters. Now our sketch is fully defined because it's fully black. Click on leaders. Now if you click on leaders, we can get rid of the black line to the center to make our sketch a little bit more clear. All right, now we're going to surface again. We close the sketch. And click on boundary surface. Now we're first going to select direction one and therefore we're going to the selection manager. We select this edge. And if we click on this arrow, we can select all the edges of the same surface. So click okay. Direction tool will be our new sketch right here. So click on this sketch and here you can instantly see our surface. Make sure that the merge tangent phases is enabled and click OK. All right. Now we're going to make another sketch on the right plane. So click on the right plane, click on normal tool. We're going to make a a line from this point up till here. It will be a vertical line. Hit escape to close the line command. Go to surfaces again and we're going to trim this surface. That the surface on the right side will be deleted. So click on keep selections and select the left side of the surface and click OK. All right, now we're going to hide the help surface by clicking on the hide icon. And we're going to make a new sketch on the front plane. We go to the line command and we click on center line. And we're going to draw a center line from the origin up till here. So it will be a center line in the middle of our model. And hit escape to close the line command. Now we're going to draw another center line. Starting from this point right here. Up till here. Hit escape again. This point is still blue, so if you select this point and this point, holding down the control key and click on make horizontal, it will fully define our line. Now we're going to draw a spline. And we will start the spline right here, up till here. We don't add any midpoints. And if you click on the spline, you can enable the spline handles. And we will drag it in a position like this. Make sure that the left spline handle is horizontal. And we also, also make sure that both spline and the handles are horizontal. Now we're going to apply a dimension of, let's say, 5 millimeters right here. And we're going to add an angle of, let's say, 75 degrees for this spline handle right here. And the spline handle length will be 55 millimeters. And the length of this spline handle will be 110 millimeters, for example. All right. 
looks good. Now we're going to make another spline and we will start the spline right here. And we make the spline up till here, to here. So it will be a three point spline. We'll turn off our shaded with edges. And now we can drag to the spline handles to create the shape we want. So you can play around with it a little bit, just like that. Let's make the lower endpoint horizontal. Make the left uh, spline handle endpoint horizontal as well. And now we're going to apply a smart dimension. The angle for this spline handle will be, let's say, 55 degrees. Just like that. Now I'm going to add another dimension from this point to this point for the nose pad. And this will be around 90 millimeters. The end piece dimension, the height will be, let's say, 40 millimeters for the end piece. And, and this height will be, let's say, 24 millimeters, just like that. Now we're going to add a dimension right here. And this one will be, let's say, 38. We're going to apply a spline handle length right here of 40 millimeters. And this spline handle will be 30 millimeters. And this horizontal spline handle in the middle will be bigger, so let's say 175. This looks about right. All right, guys. So now we're going to draw another line from this point to this point. This will be a solid line. Now we're going to use the trim surface command. Um, we make sure that the keep selections is enabled and we select the inner piece. So the purple area of the surface, the trim tool will be our newly created sketch and we click OK to keep this surface. We turn it back to shaded. And now we can see our first surface of the sunglasses. All right, we're going to make a new sketch on the front plane again. So click on front plane normal tool. Now we're going to draw the lens. And therefore we're going to use an offset of four millimeters. So we select the blue surface. And it's saying it cannot be offset. So we reverse the offset. So it will be an invert offset of four millimeters and click OK. Now we're going to trim some lines. We're going to trim this vertical line right here and the second vertical line as well. And we're going to drag those endpoints to the middle as well. We will do the same thing for the lower end point right here. All right, we're going to make sure that those end points are horizontal with each other. So make it horizontal by holding down the control key, select both points and click on horizontal. And we're going to add a smart dimension from this point to this point, And we give it a length of, let's say 50 millimeters, just like that. And we're also going to add a smart dimension from this point to this point. This will be, let's say, 25 millimeters. And the length from this endpoint to this endpoint will be, let's say, 25 millimeters as well. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a spline. And this time we're going to use a style spline. So make a spline set a second point and make a third point. And this is a, sp a style spline. I'm going to make another style spline right here. 
just like that. Now we're going to add a tangency relation between those two lines. So select them both and click on tangent. Now we're going to select this line as well, which this line, make that tangent as well. And you notice we make a tangent to the construction line. So not to the style spline, but to the construction line. So select both lines again and click on make tangent. Now we're going to select those two lines as well. And we also make that tangent just like that. We're going to close out to the sketch. Now we're going to make a split. We're going, not going to use the split line, but the split. So the trim tool will be our newly created sketch right here. And the selected body will be our main body right here. We're going to split this body into two sections. So one body for the lens and one for the rim. We make sure that the resulting bodies are both selected and we make sure the consume cut bodies is not selected and we click OK. All right, so now we have uh, two bodies right here. Here you see the blue line. We're going to give some thickness to the uh, rim of our glass. Make sure that the thickness will be two and a half millimeters. All right, guys, it's already starting to look like a glasses. Now, if you look to the uh, right side of the air, air piece, you can find an edge right here. And we want to get rid of that edge because we don't need it there. So therefore, we're going to, to use the delete and patch command. So if you go to delete phase and click on delete and patch right here. And we click OK. The surface will be smooth and the edge will be deleted. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a chamfer. The chamfer will be two millimeters. And we'll use this face chamfer. We select those two faces right here. And we're going to make sure that the chamfer parameters are set to chord width. The chord width will be two millimeters, just like that. Now we're going to make another chamfer. So we select this option again. We're going to select this surface and this surface. We're going to set it to the chord width of two millimeters again. And let's change this dimension into two and a half. I think it will look a little bit better and click OK. All right. Looks pretty good. Now we're also going to make a chamfer on the upper side of the uh, of the glass, but I think the space is a little bit too small right there. So I'm going to use a move face to make the space on the upper side of the lens a little bit bigger. So we have enough uh, space for the chamfer. So go to move face. We're going to select this face to make it a little bit longer. Let's change this. Uh, height into two millimeters and click OK. This gives us a bit more space for the chamfer. So go to chamfer again, choose this option again, and we're going to make a face chamfer again. So select those two faces. That looks good. I think we can make it a little bit bigger. So let's change this one into the chord width again, and let's make it four millimeters. I think that will look good. Click OK. Nice. All right, starting to look very good. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new sketch on the front plane. Click on Normal Tool again. And now we're going to create the nose pad of our glass in SolidWorks. So we go to style spline. We make a style spline from here, to here, to here, to here, just like that. 
you can make sure that those two lines those three lines are all equal to each other so I'll click on make equal now we can move this line right here to change the shape of the style spline make sure that this section is horizontal now we're going to make another center line right here to the to this point and we're going to make another center line from this point to this point right here. Make sure it's perpendicular. And we're going to add and uh, make perpendicular relation to that edge as well. And we make make them both equal, just like that. We're going to make sure that the center line of our style spline is tangent to the sun classes rim. So add the tangency relation. Now we're going to make another style spline for the lower part of the nose section. From this point to here, to here, to here, to here. So this is a style spline with three midpoints. Change it to hidden lines removed. This gives us a little bit better view on the sp splines. So select those two lines and make them collinear. Now select those two center lines as well. Holding down the control key and click on make collinear as well. And we also make them horizontal. Just like that. Now we're going to select this edge and this center line, this line and click to make tangent. Now we're going to add a smart dimension from this point to this point and we give it a value of let's say 5 millimeters right here. This section will get the length of one millimeter make those two equal as well and this fully defines our sketch all right so now we've created two style splines we're going to back to shade it with edges again and we're going to make sure we're going to search for the split line command click on split line the current sketch is already selected by default make sure that the type of split is projection we select this blue surface and we click ok all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new sketch on this surface so select the surface click on normal tool and we're going to make another style spline. So I'll click on style spline again. And we will start the spline right here from this point. We make a point right here. And the end point will be right here. Just like that. In this way, our style spline is immediately connected with the other lines of the split line. Now we're going to make two lines for the nose pad, just like this. Make sure that the lower line is collinear to this edge. Go to Smart Dimensions again. We're going to make sure that the angle right here is 75 degrees. Just like that. The length of this center line will be 3.5. And the angle between those two lines will be 120, just like that. All right. Now we're going to surfaces and we're going to make an extruded surface. 
And this will be a help surface. So the length doesn't really matter, but that minimum is, is OK. Click OK. And we're going to use this surface uh, in order to create the nose pad and the bridge of our sunglasses. So make a new sketch on the, on the front plane. Click on normal tool. We're going to make sure that the front surface of our glass will be hollow. And therefore, we're going to make a new line from here perpendicular to this edge. And a second one horizontal to this edge. Make sure that the line is perpendicular to this element as well, just like that. And now it turns black, so it means it's fully defined. Now we're going to make a new split line. We select those two lines. The sketch is already selected by default, the current sketch. And we click OK to split the surface. All right. It's good. Now we're going to delete face. And we're going to delete those two faces right here. We're also going to delete this face and make sure the options is set to delete. Click OK. Just like that. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a lofted surface. Zoom in a little bit. We select this line as profile one and this line right here as profile two. And the guide curve will be this upper, this upper curve right here. All right, we're going to make sure we get a perfect transition between the surfaces. So click on tendency to face. And this will make sure that the transition between the, those surfaces is looks pretty good. Click OK. All right. Now we're going to repeat this process for the lower part of the line, but this time we're going to use the filled surface. So we select this edge right here, this second edge right here, this third edge right here, and this fourth edge right here. The first and the third need to be tangent. We make sure that the optimized surface is disabled. We're going to increase the resolution control, click on the fixer boundary and click OK. This looks pretty good. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to delete this face and we're going to replace it for a hollow face. We're also going to delete this face, click OK. We're going to make a new sketch on the front plane. So click on offset again. Make sure that the offset distance is 0.5 millimeters. We select this line right here. Click on reverse and click OK. Now I'm going to make another offset right here. Also 0.5, just like that. And now we're going to extend this line a little bit to both sides. If you drag to the line point, we can extend the line. And now we're going to make a split line to split those two surfaces right here. So the first, the first face to split is this one, and the second one is this one. Click OK. All right. Now we're going to make a surface loft. Click on guide curve. We select this guide curve. And now we're going to select those two profiles we created. So profile one is right here and profile two will be right here. Just like that. We're going to apply a tendency relation again. 
So go to the start end constraint box and click on tendency to phase. And the second one, tendency to phase as well. And click OK. All right. Now we're going to hide this body right here. So click on the eye icon to hide the body. We're going to knit surfaces. So we're going to drag over all the surfaces and we deselect the lens. Click OK. All right. So now we're going to make a mirror. And our mirror face plane will be the right plane right here. We select the body to mirror and we select this rim of the glass. Make sure that knit surfaces is enabled. Click OK. All right, so this will help us to create the hollow shape in the middle right here. All right, so now we're going to make a filled surface and we select this edge right here. We select open loop. This will automatically select all the edges. Now we're going to check which of the edges are connected to other edges. So those edges right here are all connected to other surfaces. We're going to apply a tangent relation to them as well. So click on tangent and make sure that edge two, four, five, and seven are not tangent because those are sharp edges. Also make sure that the merge results and create solid are enabled. And deselect the optimized surface. And click OK. All right. This looks fairly good. Now we're going to remove one side of the glass again. And this time we're going to use the surface cut and click on the right plane. And we cut everything from the body away to the left side. So click OK. And now we have one side of the glass again. So now we can move forward with this glass. Make a new sketch on the right plane. And we click on normal tool to switch our view. And now we're going to draw a line. So click on the line command. And we're going to draw a line from here up till here. Click escape to close the line command. We select those two lines and make them perpendicular. Ellipse the feature tree right here. Awesome. Now we're going to create a style spline. So click on the style spline icon, change our display style to get a better view. Now we're going to draw a style spline with three midpoints, just like this. Click escape to close the style spline command. Now we're going to make those two center lines horizontal and those two center lines collinear to each other. We're going to make sure that our line with this center line are perpendicular, just like that. Now we're going to add some smart dimensions and the length between this point and the origin will be 33 millimeters. And the length between this point and the origin will be 10 millimeters. Just like that. The length of this center line will be 10 millimeters as well. And those two lines will be equal to each other. So this makes it a fully defined line. It turns black. We turn on our display style again. Now we're going to create a split line on those two surfaces. So select those two surfaces and click OK. And now we've created a split line on our surface. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a line on this face, but it doesn't allow us to do this because it's not a flat surface. We don't see the 2D sketch icon, so we need to do something 
to make this a flat surface. So therefore we're going to create a new plane starting on this point right here. And the second reference will be this purple curve right here. Click OK. And we're going to use this plane as a cut with surface. We make sure that it's pointed in the right direction. This gives us a, a flat surface. Now we can create a 2D sketch on this surface. So click on normal tool. And we're going to create another style spline. And the style spline will start at this point right here. We will add one midpoint and an endpoint. Just like that. And now we're going to add a length to this center line right here of 3.5 millimeters. And the angle between those two center lines will be 115 degrees. This makes our line fully defined, it turns black. And now we're going to create an extruded surface as a help surface. Click OK. The length doesn't really matter because it's a help surface. And now we're going to delete some surfaces. So go to delete face and select those three blue faces. Click OK. Now we're going to create a surface lot. So select the first profile and the second profile. The guide curves will be those two purple lines right here. And make sure to, to make the start point of the profile tendency to face and the end point tendency to face as well. And click OK. And now we've just created our whole lot surface. We can hide our help surface right here. And now we're going to knit all those surfaces together. So zoom out a little bit, select them all. So select all the faces right here, deselect the class, and make sure that merge entities is enabled, just like that. Awesome. Now we're going to uh, fill this gap right here with the planar surface. Click, click on select open loop, click OK. And now we're going to knit this surface to our body as well. So make sure that merge entities and create a solid are both enabled. Now we've created a solid body. Awesome. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a face chamfer. So click on this option right here and change the size into one millimeter. So phase one will be this blue surface and phase two will be this pink surface. And change the chamfer parameters to chord width and click OK. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a variable chamfer, but you will notice that SolidWorks doesn't have an option for this. So therefore we're going to create a variable fillet and we will later turn it into a chamfer and I will show you how. So we're going to make a variable chamfer with a size of 0.5 millimeters. And we will change the variable radius into one. The second point will be 0.5. And the third point will be 0.5 as well. So now we click OK. And we just created a variable radius. But I want to make it a chamfer. So we're going to delete this face again. And delete this face as well. Click OK. Now I'm going to use those uh, lines to create a new surface loft. So click on those two lines to create a surface loft. This small line right here will be our guide curve. Make sure it's set to global. And now we click OK. And now we've created a variable chamfer. We're going to knit those surfaces together. Make sure that merge entities is enabled and gap control is enabled as well. And we click OK. Awesome. So now we're going to create another planar surface right here. So we select this line, click on select open loop, and we select OK. Now we're going to knit those surfaces again. Click OK. Oops, I forgot to make them solid. So click on uh, Merge Entities and Create Solid and click OK. 
Awesome. Now we're going to create a new plane on this midpoint right here. And the second reference will be this purple line right here. Click OK. We make the plane a little bit bigger, so I drag it, drag on one of the corners of the plane to make them bigger. And we're going to create a new 2D sketch on this plane. So go to spline and we create another style spline starting at the origin up till here, up till here. And those two center lines will be equal, so they have the same length. The first center line will be vertical. And the length of this vertical line will be 50 millimeters. And the angle between those two center lines will be 145 degrees. Just like that. We're going to close the sketch. We're going to hide this plane by clicking on the eye icon to hide it. And we're going to create a new 2D sketch. So click on Convert Entities and close the sketch. This way we copied our geometry. So we're going to create a sweep. Our sweep profile is automatically selected. And we click on a new sketch as a sweep path. Make sure by the options that merge is disabled and click OK. Now we're going to isolate our newly created body and we click on move face. Make sure that the parameter is set to 7.5 and we're going to select this face right here. We're going to flip the direction and we click OK. So we just moved our face. Now we're going to move another face. So we click on this face right here. Make sure it's 20 millimeters and we're going to flip the direction just like that. We're going to exit the isolation and now you can see that we moved two faces. Now we're going to connect those two bodies again with each other. So click on offset entities. Make an offset of 2 millimeters right here. We're going to extend those lines a little bit, just like that. Now we're going to split. Click on split line. And we're going to split this blue surface right here. Just like that. And now we're going to create a loft from this profile to this profile right here. This is also the reason why we just added another split line because we need an equal number of split lines on both sides of the loft. Make sure it's set to curvature to face and the value will be 1.25. This will create a beautiful loft between those two bodies right here. That looks awesome. So we're going to reuse this sketch again. And we're going to make a surface extrude. And it will be a mid-plan extrude with a, with a length of 30 millimeters. Now we click on extend surface. And this will extend our surface right here. Now we're going to click on move face and we will move this face. And we will change the length into 35 millimeters. And we're going to flip the direction just like that. Awesome. Now we're going to create a new sketch on the right plane. So click on right plane. Make a 2D sketch, change the display style, and we click on Convert Entities, and we're going to convert this edge right here. 
Now we're going to create another style spline from here up till here. And a second style spline from here up till here, up till here. And a regular line from this point to this point right here. Click escape to close the line command. And we get rid of this relation right here. We're going to make sure that the first center line right here is has a length of 30 millimeters. And the second center line right here need to be have a height of 30 millimeters as well. Now we're going to add an angle between those two lines of 125 degrees and an angle between those two lines of 105 degrees. This line will be horizontal and we'll add another smart dimension from this point to this point with a distance of 10 millimeters. This line will have a length of 50 millimeters. And this line will be horizontal. And now we have a fully defined sketch. So click on the surfaces tab and we're going to trim a surface. And we will keep the purple selection. So click on keep selections and click OK. Now we're going to add some thickness to this surface. So select the surface, make sure that the thickness direction is uh, directed outward and the thickness will be three millimeters and merge results has to be disabled. So don't merge it. Now we're going to move face, change the size into 25 millimeters and we select this face, flip the direction, click OK. Now we're going to make a transition between this body and the second body. So we're going to click on move face, we flip the direction, change the size into 25 millimeters and click OK. Click on move face again, click on rotate. We're going to rotate this face right here. So make sure that the X position is zero, the Y is zero, the Z is zero, and the numbers of degrees will be minus 30. And this will, will move and rotate our surface just like that. Now we're going to add the chamfer on this edge right here. Oops, only on this edge and the size will be one millimeter, click OK. Now we're going to create another chamfer. The size will be 1.5 millimeters for this edge right here. Click OK again, and we're going to create another chamfer of two millimeters on this edge right here. Make sure it's set to this option right here, and it will be a face chamfer just like that with a size of two millimeters. Awesome. Now we're going to delete the face. So we're going to delete and patch this face right here. Click OK. And this way we make sure that our number of uh, points and edges is the same on both sides. Now we're going to create a solid loft from this face right here. up till this face. Awesome. Now we're going to change the constraints in curvature to face for both profiles. Make sure that the value is one. And the preview is already showing a very good result. Awesome. Now we're going to add a variable fillet. Changed it into conic radius with a size of 12 millimeters. We're going to zoom in a little bit and we select those two faces right here. We make it curvature continuous. I think it will look better and click OK. 
Now we're going to create another fillet. The size will be eight millimeters. This will be phase one. This will be phase two. Make sure that the profile is set to curvature continuous. The chord width will be eight and click OK. Awesome. Now we're going to create another fillet. This time the size will be 0.75. Select this edge right here and click OK. Awesome. Now we're going to create another fillet. We select this face right here. Make sure it's set to face fillet. Select this purple face right here. Change the size into 0.4 millimeters. Click OK. Awesome. Now we're going to create another fillet. Change the size into 0.35. Select this face and this face right here. Make sure that the profile is set to circular. And it will already show you a fillet in the preview. Click OK. Awesome. Now we're going to create the nose pad. So we're going to create a new sketch right here on this face. Click on line. And we're going to draw a line from here up till here. And a second line from here up till here. So we change our display style. And we're going to add a dimension from the origin up to this point right here. And we change the size into 25 millimeters. And the length between those two lines will be 70 millimeter. This line will be perpendicular to the edge. And this line will be perpendicular to the edge as well. Click on the perpendicular icon. Now we're going to create another line from this point right here up till here. And we're going to make sure those two lines are collinear. Now we're going to create a split line on this surface right here. Click OK. Now we've created a split line on the surface. If you change the display style, you will see a black line right here. Now we're going to create a new plane. So we select this endpoint and this purple line for the plane. And we're going to create a new sketch on this new plane. So select the plane. Now we're going to create a three point arc from this point right here, up till here, up till here. Now we're going to select this edge right here. Click on control and we will select the second edge and add a tangency relation. We change the display style and now we're going to smart dimensions. We're going to add a height of five millimeters between those two points. And the length will be seven millimeters, just like that. Now we're going to change our display style again. Zoom in a little bit. We hide this plane as well. We go to surfaces, offset surface. We're going to select this surface right here and change the size into zero millimeters to copy the surface. Now we're going to hide those two bodies. So click on the hide icon. And now we can fully focus on the nose pad. 
Now we're going to create a boundary surface. So select the newly created sketch and select this edge right here. Make sure it's set to tangency to face and the tangent influence will be 100%. Click OK. Click on the right plane, make a new 2D sketch. Click on normal tool. Now we're going to create a styles plan again. Starting from this point right here, we will add one midpoint, two midpoints, three midpoints, four midpoints, and an end point. And we're going to make sure that those two center lines are equal to each other. Make them tangent with this edge right here. Those two lines will be connected with this edge right here. We're going to add a smart dimension. And this length will be 5 millimeters. The angle between those two lines will be 75 degrees. The angle between those two lines will be 75 degrees as well. Go to surfaces and we're going to trim this upper part away. So click on remove selections and click OK. And this is the base for our nose pad. So merge those two surfaces together right here. Now we're going to turn on our main body again. And now we've created our first surface for the nose pad. Click on thicken. Change the thicken size into 1.25. Change the thickness di uh, direction and make sure that merge entities is enabled. Click OK. All right, now we're going to create another fillet. Change it into a chord width. Select those two faces and select this face right here. And this will create a beautiful fillet with the size of one millimeter. Make sure that the profile is set to curvature continuous and click OK. Awesome, we just created a beautiful fillet right here. Now we're going to add another fillet for this surface. It will be another face fillet, so click on this face right here and this face right here. Now you'll notice it doesn't work, so we change the size into 0.5 and click OK. Now we're going to create another regular fillet, so select this edge right here and make sure that the size is 0.5 and click OK. Awesome. So now we're going to create another fillet, and this time it will be a face fillet again. So select this face right here and this face. Make sure that the chord width is set to, to 1 and click OK. Now we're going to add a fillet on the front as well. So go to the face fillet again, collapse the feature tree, select this face. And this face right here. Make sure it's set to the chord width again. Change the size into 0.5. And click OK. Awesome. So now we're going to our surface body step. And we will select this face right here. It's our glass. Now we're going to move this face a little bit. So click on the move face. And we click on offset. And we give it an offset of 0.85. Make sure it's directed inward and click OK. So now we've created an offset of our surface for the glass. Uh, add a thicken of the surface with a thickness of 0.5 millimeter. Make sure that the merge results is disabled and click OK. 
Awesome. So now we've created our body for the class. And now click on isolate. Okay, now we're going to select the outer faces of our class. So zoom in, click on select tangency. And this will automatically select all the faces of our glass right here. Click on move face. And we're going to make sure it's set to offset and the offset distance will be 0.5 millimeter. Click OK. Now we're going to exit the isolation. Now we click on the indent feature. So we're going to select this frame and we're going to select our glass as a second body and we're going to indent those solids. Make sure it's set to 0 0.025. Click on cut and click OK. Awesome. Now, if you select this body right here, you can see that our glass is extracted from our uh, frame. Now we're going to create an, another fillet right here. Change the size into 0.25. Select those two edges right here and click OK. Exit the isolation mode. So now we've created two bodies, one class body and one class frame body. Now we're going to create another face fillet. So select this face and select this face right here. Make sure that it's set to curvature continuous and 0.5 millimeters and click OK. Awesome. So now we're going to create another fillet. Select this face right here and this face right here. Make sure it's set to 0.5 millimeters as well and click OK. Now we're going to change the material of our glass. So select the body. Go to plastic, clear plastic. And now you can pick a material right here, a polycarbonate, plastic, for example. Change the color if you want. And click OK. Awesome. Now we're going to change this material as well. So we're going to select the entire part. Go to metal and matte steel, for example. Now we're going to add another material on those faces right here. So select those faces, those faces as well. Select this face. Select this face right here. Select this nose pad face, and now we're going to face right here. We're going to change the material into matte steel with another color, for example. So make this orange, for example, and click OK. Awesome, it looks pretty good. Turn off the shaded with edges, and now we're going to mirror our bodies. So go to the mirror. This will be our mirror face and click on the bodies to mirror. Select those two bodies right here. Make sure that the knit surfaces and merge solids are both disabled and click OK. And now we're going to combine the frame of our glasses from those two bodies. Click on add and click on OK. Now we've created one solid body for our frame. Turn on the shadows. Now we just completed our glass. Awesome. Now we're going to turn on the perspective. All right, guys, we just completed our glasses in SolidWorks. I know it was a very long lesson this time, but I hope you've learned many new things. All right, guys, that's all for this lesson. Now, if you want to become a SolidWorks Pro by modeling this awesome modern 177, this super yacht, this American Chopper, this Tesla Roadster, 
and even this Boeing 747-8 in SOLIDWORKS, I want to invite you to attend my free SOLIDWORKS workshop. And you will find a link to attend this workshop in the description under this video. Alright guys, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye bye.